Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to do a trend that's been going around for a while. I wanted to switch up a little bit because I've never done this on my channel before where I do a bookshelf scavenger hunt to find my next read and then I'm going to read that book with you as a little mini reading vlog. I personally got this idea off of obviously bestie Ellen but I think Ellen got the idea off of Riley Marie and then she got it from someone else. It's a very long going trend and it's been going for a long time it's just that I've personally never done it. But I do have the prompts written down on my phone here so we are going to use those as obviously some guidance. So prompt number one is find a recent five star read and a book that you would recommend to people based off of that taste, based off of that five star read. Okay so if you watch my channel you'll know by now that Magnolia Parks is my all time favourite book. I read it in September last year, so nearly a year ago, and I suppose it's not necessarily like a newer five star read but it is my favourite book of all time so I thought that it would probably be best to start off with this one. And the book that I'm going to recommend, even though it's arguably an older book, is the Addicted series. Arguably I should say if you like this then you'll like this, but this is the 5 star and this was like a 4.75. But I feel like if you loved Magnolia Parks and you like that toxic, messy kind of vibe, this would be really really good for you. So I'm going to put Magnolia Parks back and pick our next prompt based off of this book. So our next prompt is count the number of letters in the title and pick a random spot on your shelf and count that number of books. So Addicted to You has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 13 letters on the title. So I'm going to just pick a random place. I think I'm just going to go up here and start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now we have Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I haven't read this book yet so we're going to see what the next prompt is. Find a book with similar elements on the cover. Okay, so on this cover we're going to have a little look at it now. It has a wolf, it has, she looks like an elfy kind of vibe because she's got pointy ears. It has like some sort of flower on it and it has like red thick writing and it does have a moon and stars. So I feel like that's a little bit promising and, and some trees. We do have two other bookshelves as well so we're not just solely focused on this one today. So I'm just going to little think about covers that potentially have this. I feel like I might be best looking at a fantasy book if I'm looking for some of these elements maybe and a lot of my fantasies are down there so I'm just gonna have a little look at those as well Okay, so I have these three books here. Obviously we have Bride, which is what we're like basing this off of. This one has cutie little stars on it. But obviously Bride does have the big row of like foresty trees at the bottom. And I feel like that's a bigger element than the stars. So if I was to base it just off of the trees, we do have Unravel Me by Becca Mack. So I think I'm going to go for this one because the trees seem to be like a more significant element in the cover alongside both. And they're even both along the bottom. I feel like obviously the covers are completely different, but the trees are in the same place place and I feel like it just suits the vibe I don't know so I think I'm gonna go for this one our next prompt is to reverse the page count and find a book with a similar page number so I feel like this one might be a bit easy because I do have some quite big fantasy books this book is exactly oh 503 pages that has done me dirty because now I need to find a small book because I need one that's 305 pages if we reverse it 503 which means we need to find a book with 305 pages. When I was reading this book, I can remember it being around the 300 page mark. Look how ruined this book is, by the way. It fell in the water when I was on holiday. It's disgusting. Please be 305 or at least somewhat similar. You can't obviously do it exactly the same. Tell me why it's bang on 305 pages. I just knew, I knew that When in Rome was 305. Perfect. Let's check what our next prompt is. List some of the tropes in the book and find a book that shares one or more of these tropes. If I had to list off like the generic main tropes of When in Rome, I would say it's like slightly grumpy sunshine, small town for sure. Like that is probably like the main big trope in this book is the fact that it's a small town romance and it's a little bit of false proximity and just like a fluffy cute vibe. So I'm gonna go for my bookshelves and see if I can find like a small town vibe because that's exactly what I think of when I think of small town, it's like this series. So we need to find another small town. I could just cheat the system and just do the second one because they're set obviously in the same world but I'm not gonna do that because I feel like that's just cheating. I think I'm gonna have to revert back to my roots here and of course pick Flawless by Elsie Silver, or just the Chestnut Spring series in general. This is by far one of my favourite series ever and it is so significant in the like small town trope because obviously it is centred around Chestnut Springs and 
everyone in the town and stuff like that. So this is definitely one of my top choices for small town. Oh, the next prompt is find a book with a similar colour combo. So obviously I've picked a book with only one colour on it because it's just different shades of pink. So we can go any pink book right now. I have actually got quite a few pink books. I've got some Ali Hazelwood books that are pink that I haven't read. I've got Charlie Love and Clichés that I haven't read. Things We Hide From The Light. Like I've got quite a few books that are pink. There's some over there as well. I do think that I might go for this one, but I kind of feel like that is half blue. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get away with that one. So I think the best one for me to do is Picking Daisies on Sundays because I feel like this is such a lovely cover and it's just so lovely and pink and cute and even the back is just like mainly pink. So I feel like if we're basing it just solely off of Flawless, it's the same kind of vibe. So prompt number seven is read the first sentence of this book, pick any word in that sentence and find a book with that word in the title or on the cover. So what is the first sentence of Picking Daisies on Sundays? The first sentence is I love Levi Coldwell. Because half of the words are a name, the only words that we can use is I and love. And I feel like I have got a couple with love. I can see one right now that says love on it. So our choice is Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood. That has love. And that obviously was in the sentence of Picking Daisies on Sundays. So the next prompt is to go to the acknowledgement section of this book. Find an acknowledgement with a name in it and find a book with one of the names on your shelf. It's kind of confusing to explain that one. But I'm going to go to the acknowledgements and see who she thanked for this book. See if I can find anything that sort of correlates on my bookshelf. So we have the name Sarah. We have the name Liz. That's promising. I can picture books in my head. Tara. I've got a book on my shelf by Tara. Katie, we've got Margaret, Jen. I'm so glad that she thanked a lot of people because we've got options here. The one that's sticking out to me the most is Sarah because I know that I have done a Sarah Adams book in this video already, but I feel like that would be the best thing to maybe do because I don't know, I don't know why. I'd, that's just out of all the names on there, that's what I'm thinking of in my head. So I'm going to go to another Sarah Adams book, but I'm not going to use the two that we have technically mentioned. I'm going to go for the rule book. This book is, I haven't actually read this one yet, but I've heard nothing but good things about it, but we're going to see our next prompt. Find a book with a similar looking cover. I'm really glad that I picked this simply because I just feel like this is quite a generic style of cover. Not only is it a cute cartoon, it's also beachy and I do have quite a few summery beachy reads. I'm just trying to look for all my beachy books because I know that I have a few. So I feel like the book that looks most like the rule book in my opinion is Beach Rivals. They are kind of similar, they are kind of different. This one has like the sand, the beachy vibe and stuff like that. So I thought this would be a good one to choose. So obviously we're now going to look at our next prompt for this. Oh my god, this is arguably the hardest prompt ever. Add your birth month and your day together and turn to that page and find a book with that word in the title, like the first word on the page. So my birthday is the 19th of July, so it'd be 19 plus 7, which is 26. So we're going to have to go to page 26 in Beach Rivals and see what the first word is. The first word in Beach Rivals is if on page 26. Just if. And I'm trying to think if I've got something on my bookshelf with if on it. Because that was the last prompt. Which means that I'm going to have to find a book with the word if on it. And that is going to be the book we read. <sighs> so, drum roll to the book that we're going to be reading in today's reading vlog. And that is If We Ever Meet Again by Anna Huang. This one has the first word of page 26 out of Beach Rivals. And it actually correlates with quite a couple of the prompts that we've done in this one. The sky and stuff like that, it's pink. We did a whole thing about pink prompts. So I feel like it is quite fitting and that is what our scavenger hunt has led us to. So this is what we're going to be reading in today's reading vlog and it's fairly short and sweet. It's an author that I know and love so I'm actually quite looking forward to this. I wasn't hoping on starting a new series. I'm going to be honest with you, I did not want to start a new series but we will see. I've heard nothing but good things so you will now see me read this book. Oh my god, that's so hot. Hello guys. I haven't spoken to this vlog since yesterday, which is nothing unusual. I don't know why I'm telling you that. But I have officially started our book for this video, which is If We Ever Meet Again by Anna Huang. I feel like I didn't really introduce it to this video because I just assume that because it's Anna Huang, you kind of all know who it is. But this is the author of the Twisted series, the King of Sin series. She's a very well famous and well known author, so I don't know why I'm even explaining that to you. But I feel like this is more of one of her more unpopular series. Like, don't get me wrong, 
still very popular they were in the works for quite cheap as well so like you've probably all seen them but out of all of her books this series is probably the ones that i would think of the least but I love the Twisted series, so I do have some high hopes for this. I am currently on page 59, so I started it when I got home from work today, and it is currently nearly 9pm, so I have a little bit of time now to just sit and read this book. I was going to try and binge it in like one sitting and just see how that goes because i do have time as i said to to read it tonight but i think i'm just going to try and see how much i can physically read up until the point where i want to go to sleep and it is a fairly short book as well it's literally like under 300 pages but obviously as i said on page 59 i will say my first impression of this book isn't anything crazy and i'm trying to think of a word that i can use i had a really good example of the word in my head earlier and now i can't think of it it's like a little bit better than meh but still not great i'm not obsessed with it i won't lie to you i'm not excited to read the rest of this book i'm not like oh my god i can't wait to finish it but I'm also not not enjoying it at this very point. I feel like I just need the story to set up a little bit, to get to know the characters a little bit more. Our two main characters who meet in Shanghai when they study abroad for a year. I think from what I've heard of it, it's sort of like they're in the same kind of friendship group, but they don't really like each other or they have like mutual friends. They don't really like each other. And then obviously then they start getting to know each other and stuff like that. But as I said, fairly short, so not 100% sure like the pacing and stuff like that of this book. But I have my tea and book sweatshirt on from literature stitches and my tea this is literally iconic this is how i live the majority of my nights that has cooled down a bit now thank god characters in this book called Courtney and Chris and even though Courtney's spelt with a C I cannot get the Kardashians out of my mind it's slowly killing me I can't I literally just can't do this I'm on chapter 14 which is like over 100 pages but not the point and the book literally just said that he is in love with her they've known each other for three months not that that is like an unrealistic standard but come on, give me more. Give me time to grovel. I feel like I just haven't even, I haven't even chance to get to know these people yet. And they're already confessing their love in their own minds. What is the point in the second half of the book then? I'm really not enjoying myself, as you can imagine. As you can see, I'm trying to be more honest whether I don't like a book or not. And this is, it's come at the perfect time because I hate this right now. Not loving this at all. sat and read up to page 220 i feel like the only reason that i've read this so fast and i'm gonna be real with you is because i want it to be over i do feel like i'm hating on this book a little bit too much but i want to be a little bit more on it with myself with being honest with my reviews because i'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that this book is that enjoyable like i can see why some people like it and i can see why some of my friends consider it some of their favorite books like and i love anna huang so this is in no way me disregarding her work or her as an author or her as a person because the twisted series they were some of my favorite books last year i didn't rate one of the twisted books lower than a three and a half to four star but i loved those books and i feel like the reason that this isn't hitting for me is one because it's third person which i forgot to say at the start it is third person so it's a little bit different from her other writing. I feel like I've gone into it with the expectations, thinking it's gonna be like the Twisted series, and it's not. Oh my God, my cat is literally staring, well not my cat, but our family cat is staring at the tripod.
So I'm trying to put into words how I thought about this book and just my thoughts in general. I read this book in literally one night in one sitting and it wasn't because I enjoyed it. Obviously, as you probably would have seen by some of my reactions, I just felt like this was just very different from Anna Huang's other books. It wasn't just, I don't know how I can talk about it without really hating on it and it isn't that it's like even bad because I can fully understand and see why someone else would like this book. I can see some of my friends are obsessed with this book. I can see why they would like it but obviously I went into it thinking it was going to be the same vibes as the Twisted series, as the King of Sins and that just wasn't it for me. I don't know if it was the third person thing or the characters that I didn't enjoy but there was just something about this that just rubbed me the wrong way. There was also huge tropes in there that just are like Arguably, if you had to rank all book top tropes or just all book tropes in general, those two are the ones that are rated like everyone's least favourite. And what did Anne do? She chucked them in this book, didn't she? She did. I feel like with the trope that it is, and that is the cheating trope, this book is too short. If you put it in, I've just finished Keeping 13, there is not the cheating trope in this book. But if you was to put it in a book this size, for example, there is enough time to even consider me forgiving you because you need that explanation and that reason, for example. Whereas this, because it's 300 pages, I'm like, you're just getting started. Like, I read this in a matter of hours and I just feel like I wasn't even present in that time. I just don't even have any recollection of it. And that's me saying that a day later. And I just don't really care. And I know this is bad because I feel like the whole point of this video was this scavenger hunt and I was only gonna read one book for it. And I feel really bad hating the book because this is the only book for this video, but I can't help it guys. Sometimes you just don't like books and that's okay. But all in all, I think I'm gonna rate this one like a one and a half star. That is the lowest rating I have ever ever rated a book but i think it's because of the tropes the writing it just wasn't the same and it wasn't the vibe i wanted i was thinking cute fluffy tiny little 300 page book with a cute pink cover like hello with an author that i know and love but it just wasn't it for me and that's okay so i do apologize guys but that is everything for today's video. Very, very sorry that I hated the book, but here we are. But if you like this scavenger hunt thing, then I definitely will do it again in the future because I found it so, so fun to actually do. But just keep me posted and I can do another one. But I love you guys lots and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Bye.